This is the second part of chapter 5. When it designed circuits with uh, latches as memory element, uh, we have uh, some uh, feedback problem. Remember, the latches are level sensitive device, so as long as the clock is high, the input changes uh, the value stored in the latches and the output changes accordingly. And, but the uh, flip flops are uh, edge sensitive one. So the problem of a latch is uh, because of uh, this path. What it is is that uh, output of the latches are fed back to combinational circuit part. Uh, and then combination circuit output is uh, dependent upon current input. So that will affect uh, the output of a combination combinational circuit, which mostly fed into input of the latches as well. So what happens when clock pulse is on high, then the current input to the latches, uh, which is coming from the combination circuit, changes the output of the latches. Uh. Because of this uh, feedback loop, uh, the output of the latches uh, affects the combinational circuit input, which end up changing output of the combination circuit, which changes the input of the latches. So we have uh, some loop problem here. So latches are not properly working if we use uh, as a memory device in sequential circuit design. So we have uh, a flip-flop. Flip-flops are uh, edge sensitive, which means uh, the flip-flop works uh, at the moment the clock changes its level, either from low to high or high to low. At that transitioning moment, uh, the flip-flop changes its stored value, uh, on the contrary to the latches, which simply changes uh, the stored value according to the level. Here, the flip-flop could be uh, easily designed uh, by cascading two latches, uh, D latches. Uh. Here, just to consider those two together as with one big box. Uh, considering this is a one flip-flop, then we have a D input and the clock input and the one output Q. How this works is as follows. Uh, suppose uh, currently clock is on low, then the first latch is uh, disabled uh, so that the output of a first latch, which is a Y, does not change according to any changes of a D input. So Y is a stable, not changing at all. Since the input to the second latch is not changing at all, the ultimate output Q does not change. So whatever changes is being happening on D, the input of the entire device, the output does not change. And if a clock is high now, on high, then of course the first latch is enabled uh, so that output changes according to the input applied to in, uh, D. But uh, because of this inverter, the second latch is uh, disabled. Uh, so then uh, even if uh, the Y changes according to the input D, because the second latch is disabled, the ultimate output Q does not change. So what it means is that when clock is either in low or high, the entire flip-flop does not work. The flip-flop is supposed to work to the input when clock is given, the output should be changing according to the input. That's a definition of a D flip-flop or latch. But as we examined, uh, this big box uh, as a flip-flop does not work uh, when clock is high or clock is low. So it's not a level sensitive device. Uh. But let's consider the clock is make transitioning from high to low. High to low. When clock is on high, 
the first latch is enabled uh, so that whatever value is applied on D will, ap will appear on Y, the output of the first uh, latch. And then clock goes down. While it goes down, it will pass a certain threshold moment uh, which is uh, considered uh, not high enough uh, so that when uh, clock signal go passes through the threshold level the first flip flop the first latch is disabled so on that moment what was on d is a latch on output y and then first latch disables disables but when clock is goes down because of this inverter now the second flip-flop is enabled, so if clock goes through the threshold and it goes low enough, then because of the inverter, second latch is high enough uh, so that it's uh, enabled. So whatever value latched on D will appear on Q. And the clock goes down again, continues goes down, and then goes to low level, then entire device is st stabilized, the output does not change. So, if we have a cascaded configuration like this, uh, and then if you consider those two as uh, one flip-flop, then this flip-flop works, uh, meaning the output changes uh, to the input when clock is making transition from high to low, which is uh, as edge triggered uh, flip-flop. So as you trigger the flip-flop is uh, made out of uh, two latches uh, connected uh, in cascade mode. So here uh, the flip-flop is triggered uh, when clock makes transition from high to low. We say it's a negative edge triggered or we say it's a falling edge triggered. To make a positive edge trigger, meaning that when clock is making transition from low to high, uh, we can uh, make a positive edge trigger the deeply flop something like this, uh, which looks uh, more complicated though. But if you are challenged, uh, you may figure it out yourself for fun. So here, uh, latches uh, are level sensitive, uh, so responses to the level of the clock uh, in, uh, while the flip-flops are edge sensitive so either positive edge which is a rising edge of the clock or falling edge is negative edge triggered or triggered flip-flops there so mostly we will consider negative edge triggered flip-flops in this course Another type of flip-flop is a JK flip-flop. The symbol, graphic symbol for JK flip-flop is here. So we have two inputs, J and K. Of course, we have a clock input. And then we have two outputs, a Q and a Q bar. Actually, Q and Q, Q bar are complementary to each other. So in logically, this is just one output though. Here is a bubble, means this is a complement to the output. Oh. And the uh, JK flip flop is configured uh, from D flip flop such that the input has uh, some extra circuit like this. Uh. So this circuit is uh, expressed uh, here. So how does this work as uh, follows? Uh, when uh, J and K both inputs are zero, then output remains unchanged to the clock ticks. But when J and K's are both ones, then output becomes complemented when on next clock tick. When J is a zero and the K is a one, then output becomes zero on next clock. When J is a 1 and K is a 0, then on next clock, output D becomes 1. So depending on input combinations, uh, on next clock tick, JK flip-flop produces output in this way. 
Another type of a flip-flop we are going to use in this class is T flip-flop or toggle flip-flop. Graphical symbol is given here. So we have one input T. And of course, we have a clock in the one output Q or it's a complemented form of the output is available as well. T flip-flop is configured by having exclusive OR on a D flip-flop input and then the exclusive OR as two inputs. One is a feedback from the output Q and the other is input T. Or you can make a T flip-flop using JK flip-flop by tying both the J and K input together. So we have two ways of making T flip-flop. One is using D flip-flop, the other is using T flip-flop. Because of uh, this configuration, uh, the T flip-flop works uh, as follows. When T input is a zero, then output Q remains unchanged on next clock ticks. But if a T is a one on next clock tick, output Q becomes complemented. That's a T flip-flop. So in this course, we are going to use three types of flip-flops. D flip-flop, JK flip-flop, and T flip-flop. And the flip-flops could be expressed using table form. Here we call it as a characteristic table. Remember, truth table is only for combinational circuits. Since here we are dealing with a sequential circuit, the name of the table is a characteristic table. So JK flip-flop characteristic table is written as follows. You have two inputs, J and K. And we list all possible combination of input values, something like a truth table. And as to the output, we label as a Q of a T plus 1. Q of a T plus 1 means the value of a Q output on next clock tick. That's the meaning of a Q of a T plus 1. So Q of a T means the value of the Q output at this moment, currently. That's the meaning of a Q of T. So JK flip-flop is described using characteristic table as follows. When JKs are both zeros, then output Q on next clock tick is the same as a current value on Q, which means no changes. When J is a zero and K is a one, on next clock tick output Q becomes a zero. When J is a 1, K is a 0, on next clock tick, output Q becomes a 1. When both J and Ks are 1s, uh, then on next clock tick, the output Q will have a complement value of a current value of Q. So this is uh, what the characteristic table means. And D flip-flop is a rather simple. We have a 1 input D, so we have two values on D. The Q of T plus 1 is uh, the value of Q on next clock tick. When D is 0, Q becomes a 0. When D is 1, Q becomes a 1 on next clock tick. T flip-flop, we have a 1 input T. And the value of a Q on next clock tick is when T is a 0, no changes. T is a 1, value becomes a complemented. So this is a characteristic table. Another means of uh, expressing uh, flip-flop behaviors is a characteristic equation. Characteristic equation. So here, D flip-flop, Q of T plus 1 means a value of a Q output on next clock tick is the same as a value on D input. So this is a characteristic equation for D flip-flop. Characteristic equation for JK flip-flop is a uh, value of uh, output Q on next clock tick is determined by this logic. The value on J and the uh, complemented the output or not K and Q. And T flip-flop characteristic equation is a uh, the output of Q on T flip-flop on next clock tick is a exclusive OR of T input and the current Q output. 
in practical purposes, uh, uh, flip flops has uh, another input. Is asynchronous input is there? Asynchronous means uh, the flip flop works uh, or responds to this input without synchronized with the clock. So regardless of the clock, the flip flop works immediately, similar to combination circuit. That's uh, called the uh, asynchronous input. For practical reasons, uh, the flip flops mostly has a asynchronous input for resetting the device. When the first time the power is up, the values stored on the flip-flops are unknown, but in practical application, we need to set to some a certain value. So using the reset asynchronous input, we de define the initial value of the flip-flop. So for that purpose, uh, uh, almost all flip-flops uh, have uh, asynchronous uh, reset input.